Hi everyone! So today you are watching the tutorial for the Serene skirt. Uh, hopefully you love it as much as I do. Uh, I called it the Serene skirt because it's so comfortable and chilled out and relaxed. So hopefully uh, you get that connection. So just, I hope you can see it from here. So we have a lovely elasticated waist to work through and pockets. We have this optional trim if you decide to do that. Uh, which I will show you in this tutorial, but it's up to you whether you include it. And then if I can show you, we have the wonderful high low frill down there at the bottom. So I don't know if you've watched these tutorials before, but we're going to go through step by step following the instructions. So hopefully you have your instructions close by. Uh, the combination of the two uh, hopefully makes this a really nice project uh, to work through. Um, we're going to go through each uh, pattern piece in a moment. Uh, I'm assuming that you've cut it out and I'm just going to make sure you are aware of where all the construction marks are so that we don't get caught out uh, as we go through this project. Um, a little note about seam finishes. So I'm not going to show you any seam finishes during this tutorial, but you might see that uh, suddenly seams are overlocked. That's because that's my choice of seam finish and that's because I have an overlocker. Uh, you will notice in your instructions there's a section all about seam finishes so it gives you the options. So you finish your seams however you see fit and we'll finish them after every, um, every row of stitching, every seam that we stitch. Okay so I will bring you around so we can have a proper look at what I'm up to uh, and we'll get started shall we? The first part that I want to show you is the waistband and that's because we have a buttonhole to mark on the waistband and I just want to let you know that it's optional. So there is a, a waist tie for this skirt but actually it isn't to tie the skirt, the elastic will keep it on. It's more of a detail so if you do want to do that detail then we do need to mark the buttonhole line here. Uh, my choice of doing that is to use some tracing paper here which I folded in half and I've tucked through so it's facing the right side of my waistband because that's where I need to be able to see it. And then I'm just going to use a ballpoint pen to draw over that line so it will mark it. I will show you that in a second. But whilst we're here, I want to show you this mark here and this one in the opposite. You'll see that a lot throughout my projects and it's just a notch that you want to mark on the fold of the fabric. It just annotates the center point of that strip. So we've got one on either side here that you need to just put an, a, a clip uh, through. And then we also have on the opposite side, we have these two lines that you need to snip uh, and that's where we're gonna feed the elastic through. So that's what we have on our um, waistband. Let me show you how those buttonholes mark. It's not quite come through on that one. Can you see the green line? So we've got two green lines then and that's where I know where to do my buttonholes when I get to that point. You have there are no marks on your pocket pieces, but there are marks on your front and back. And again, they are marks at the centre point here. So I'd like you to mark through those. If your lower skirt is two pieces that you've cut, you'll have the centre points to mark too. So there's very little in terms of construction marks on this project, but they are important. So I really, really do want you to focus on them. So once we've got all of that sorted, that's step one done, guys. So we're going to move on to step two, which is looking at our pockets onto our front. So I will be back. I want you to have your two pockets and your front and then any trim that you may be adding as a detail onto that pocket. So what I have here on the table is the front of our skirt and the right side of the fabric is facing the ceiling. So this bit here is that diagonal cut where the pocket's going to go. And this is my chosen trim. So I've chosen to do something different to what's in the instructions. In the instructions it's some bias binding but this is just a ribbon. So we're going to place it on the uh, angle of the pocket. What's important is to understand how much of this ribbon is gonna show, because it's gonna be sandwiched in the seam. 
So what I would like you to do is to just measure your one and a half centimetres from the raw edge in, because that's going to be where we stitch. So I'm just going to measure and pop a couple of pins along that line so that it's clear how much of the ribbon we're then going to overlap. So the pins are on my stitch line. Can you see those? Let me bring you a little bit closer now that you've got an understanding. And then what we're going to do, we're going to decide, I think we just need a few mil of this showing. So I'm going to lay it over the top of those pins and I'm going to put some pins through the ribbon this time. And I think it's probably going to be two centimetres to the edge of the ribbon. Yep. And then I can measure that all the way around. So in theory, I will just have five millimetres, a half a centimetre of this trim showing. Now, because it's a ribbon and I'm, I've not put it right on the edge, I think I'm going to stitch through this first just to kind of keep it in place. So that will be our first step. So if you pin everything that you have in place and we'll just run a stitch down it. OK, so I shall see you at the machine in a moment. What I'd also like to make sure that you've done is that you've set your machine up so that you've checked you have the correct needle and that you're all threaded up and ready to go. See you there. So what you can see here is the edge of the pocket and the ribbon that we've accurately stitched. I'm just going to use the seam allowance guide, so the one and a half centimetres, and I'm just going to stitch this ribbon in place. Just makes the next step much easier. Do that to both of your pockets and then we'll get back to uh, adding the pockets onto the front. So what you can see here is the trim that I've added along uh, that pocket edge and then I have the pocket here. Now this is the diagonal that's the pocket itself and we're going to line them up and lay it over the top. Now, what you need to be thinking at this point, because you're using quite fluid fabrics, so I want you to actually trust in your own cutting out and make sure that everything works. So we're going to put a pin at the bottom, matching, and then a pin at the top so that it matches. Because what lightweight fabric does is it has a tendency to move. And I want you to be in charge and I want you to make sure that that fabric does what you need it to do. So we're going to make all of the raw edges match along this edge and put pins across there. And once we've done that, we're going to go back to the sewing machine and stitch using a one and a half centimetre seam allowance. So what that should do is catch our lovely ribbon inside. So we've got a nice detail on the pocket. I'll leave you to pin and then I'll meet you at the sewing machine and we'll get that stitched. So we're set at our regular stitch length, which is normally somewhere between two and a half and three. Um, and we're just on a straight stitch and we're going to go all the way down this edge. Our regular seam allowance, which is one and a half centimetres or five eighths of an inch. We're going to do our back stitch as we always would do. And we're going to gently stitch down this edge. 
Now, if you go nice and gentle, you've got less chance of stretching. But one of the good tips for stretch fabrics and lightweight fabrics is to kind of have a bump of fabric in front of the foot. It just ensures that the machine does the work bringing the fabric into it rather than you stretching or pushing or pulling. So just be nice and gentle. Keep watching your seam allowance along here and stitch it right to the end. If you do that to both sides of your pockets and then I will see you at the ironing board and we'll move on to the next step. So what you can see here is the two pockets that are attached along this edge and this edge. So we have that uh, ribbon in between. What I want you to do is to press all of the seams here towards the pocket that's now up here. So this is the skirt front coming here and this is the seam that we've been working on. So I just want you to press everything up towards the pocket, but I want you to make sure that the ribbon or trim is pushed towards the front underneath. Now let me press it and then I'll explain what that looks like on the other side. So we're just gonna press all of that seam across to the pocket so that on this side that lovely trim is facing the skirt so it's all nice and flat if you do that to both then i'll meet you at the sewing machine and we'll do some under stitching so we're going to under stitch and under stitching means that this seam that we press towards the pocket, which is on this side, we're going to stitch it down to the pocket. So not to the front, which is on this side, we're going to stitch it down to the pocket. We're keeping our stitch length and everything the same and we're just going to stitch as close as we can to that original stitch line without going across here. So we're going to do our back stitch as we always would. And we're going to just gently make sure that the fabric's pulled in these two directions just so that we get a really nice crisp um, uh, seam at the front. So it's not a pull, more just a making sure. If you pull it, you could stretch it out of shape, but we're just making sure it's as crisp as possible. Once you've done this to uh, this side, I want you to repeat it on the other side and then we're back at the old uh, ironing board for the next step. So what you should have now is a seam here with your trim. This side is the skirt and this side is your pocket. And what we're gonna do, if I don't put the camera on top of the pocket, <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold that pocket over to the back of the skirt so we actually then see that crisp line that we're going to see in the skirt itself so once you folded that over I want you to give it a press so behind you have the pocket and at the front is the skirt now I'm just going to flip this around to show you the next step I'm hoping this is a better angle. So this bit is the skirt front, but the wrong side's facing up. And this is the pocket that we have just pressed crisply along that line. I want you to fold the pocket and the pocket only along the fold line that was on your uh, pattern piece. So you're basically going to match the two corners at the bottom and match it across the top. And we're going to stitch along this bottom so we're gonna pin it. I just want you to make sure that you can see that I'm not pinning it to the skirt front. So I am just pinning the two pocket pieces to themselves. And we're simply gonna stitch across this line to form the bottom of the pocket. I'll let you do that to both of your pockets and then I'll meet you back and we just have a few uh, temporary stitches to pop in and then you'll have a front of the skirt with the pockets so we've stitched across the bottom edge of this pocket and what I've done now is I've matched across the top here so matched with the waistband and I've matched down the side seam here I've made sure everything is lovely and flat so we have no ripples and bumps and I've just pinned 
in those two locations. So if I turn it around, you can see that what we're actually doing is finishing off, let me just put that flat for you. What you can see is we're actually finishing off that pocket detail there. So we've pinned across the top and down the side. And then we're just going to stitch across there using a thin or a slim seam allowance. So we're gonna use the edge of the foot as a guide. I will show you though, but if you pin your pockets like that, and then I'll meet you at the machine and we'll go through the next step. So this is just to show you what a six millimeter seam allowance looks like or a slim seam allowance. So instead of the edge of the fabric being on the one and a half centimeter uh, line, we're just gonna leave it on the edge of the foot. What that means is that when we actually stitch the seam on this line, we will um, end up stitching across here. So this seam that we're doing now, So I just thought I'd show you what a slim six millimetre seam looks like. So ordinarily, we'd be following this line, which is a one and a half centimetre. But we're just going to use the edge of a foot, edge of the foot, sorry, as the guide. So we're just going to stitch using the foot as that guide down the edge. What this means is that when we ultimately stitch something onto this waistband, we're going to be stitching over here at the one and a half centimetres from the edge, which means that what we're doing now won't be seen. The only purpose for this stitching is just to keep that pocket in place before we complete the rest of the garment. OK, I'll let you do those four little bits of, of stitching to keep your pockets in place and then I'll meet you with this along with the back of your skirt. OK. So what you can see here is that beautiful front of your skirt that you've uh, made with complete with your pockets. So I'm going to take the back of your skirt and I'm going to lay it with the right sides together over the top. And then we're simply going to match all the way down this side seam and pin in place. And then it's just our regular one and a half centimetre, sorry, one and a half centimetre seam allowance, we're going to stitch down this side and repeat it on the other side. And then hopefully you're ready for some gathering. All right, I'm going to let you do that. I think you're quite clear on how to do the seam allowance. Make sure you keep it on that line for that one and a half centimetres. And then if you're going to finish your seams, then you will do that. And I'll meet you at the ironing board. I just want to refresh your mind as to how you um, press the seams open. OK, see you there. OK, so this is our side seam that we've just stitched and I've finished using an overlocker. But again, that's up to you which method you use. Um, pays to have your instructions handy, doesn't it, guys? Because I said I was going to show you how to press the seams open. But the instructions that I wrote, by the way, <laughs> tell you to press your seams towards the back. So that's away from the pocket. Um, now I've seen it, I know why I did that because you can create quite a bulk here where the pocket is. So we'll press all of the seams to the back. But before we press them to the back, press them forwards first. Just gives you a really crisp line to work with. So you actually have now the front, sorry, the, the top half of your skirt. And we're gonna go on to doing the gathering for the beautiful flounce at the bottom. So I will meet you at the sewing machine. You need all of your bottom skirt panels. So you may have just two of them that are folded in half, or you may have eight individual pieces, but whichever way that you have, I will meet you back at the machine with them uh, ready to start. Okay, so it doesn't matter how many bottom skirt panels you have, you're going to do exactly the same thing. And what that is, is we're creating a big circle of fabric. So all of your panels get stitched together, whether that's just two seams that you have to do or whether you've got all eight panels to join together. So just as we have done before, we're going to trust our cutting out. We're going to pop a pin at the top and a pin at the bottom. 
it really does pay to make sure at this point that your fabric is all facing the right way. It's easy to forget that because you're too busy focusing on creating this big circle of fabric. Once you've done that, you can manipulate the fabric so that they all match along there and pin. You're going to stitch them all with a one and a half centimetre seam allowance as normal. You're then going to finish each seam. Sorry, that's a blunt pin. You're going to finish each seam and you're going to press the seams open this time. So some of you may have a longer process to do. Some of you may just have to do this twice, but I will meet you back when you've done that work and you have a full circle of fabric, okay? So just to recap, you're going to stitch them all together in a long row and then connect them so they're into a circle using a one and a half centimetre seam allowance. You're going to use your choice of seam finish on all of those seams and press them all open, okay? I shall see you when you've done that, guys. So this is our big circle of uh, fabric and we're going to put some gather stitches at the top. So the first thing to notice is I have a different coloured thread and it's a contrast to everything else that we're using so that we can see it clearly when we start to gather the fabric. Uh, we're going to put our stitch length as high as it will go. Mine will go to four and a half and we're going to do two rows of stitching. One of them is going to be at one centimetre and the other is going to be at two centimetres. We're not going to do any back stitching. We're just going to go straight from the side seam to the other side seam. So we're not going all the way around. There's too much fabric if we go all the way around and you'll just get cross uh, if your fabric, um, if the thread snaps when you're gathering. So we're just going to go from one side seam to the other side seam. So if you use two pieces of fabric, you're just going from seam to seam and then you'll repeat it on the back going seam to seam in the other direction. The one that I'm making here has the eight panels. So you're going to stitch across four panels, okay? So from one seam, stitch all the way across four panels and that's when you stop. OK, I'm going to go for it now. It's a bit awkward with you guys being perched in front of my sewing, so bear with me. So we're just watching this edge, making sure we stay on that one centimetre. And we're going to go right over to the side seam. So just to recap, if you've only used two pieces on the fold, then you're just going to go to the other seam. If you stitched eight together, you're going to stitch across four panels and then stop at that seam. I'm going to carry on and then I'll join you back when I start the two centimetre on the other side. OK, so you should have these two rows of stitching all the way around the top of your lower skirt and they should stop at the side seam like this. So you've got one set on one side, it doesn't go all the way across on the side seams and another set on the other side. Once you've done that, whilst we still have the different coloured thread in our um, machine, we're going to work on the hem. So this is... A Step number seven in your instructions. I'm just checking what the hem allowance is. Okay, so the hem allowance is two centimetres. Now, I'm not sure if you guys have done a hem like this before. So um, when you're using lightweight fabric or if it's a curved hem, this is a really great tip. And what we're going to do using this different coloured thread is we're going to stitch a row of stitching on the seam allowance. So again, we're using a large stitch and we're not going to do any back stitching. So it's exactly the same as what we've just done for the gather stitch, but we're going to do it just once at that seam allowance. And we're going to do that all the way around. And what this does in the next step you'll see is we're going to use this row of stitching to, as a guide really, to produce a really crisp, lovely hem. Okay, so once you've done this, you can put the original thread back in your machine and I'll see you at the ironing, ba ironing board. Uh, remember to bring lots of pins. So work we're working on this bit. This is our stitch line that we've just done. Sometimes it can be a bit wrinkly, so 
just give it a quick press with the iron first so you know what you're dealing with and then what we're going to do is we're going to use that as the guide so we're going to fold the fabric up this is the wrong side by the way so we're going to fold it up so that those stitches are precisely on that crease and then we're going to press so we get a really lovely crease at the right location Remember steam is your best friend when you're doing this, but don't have your iron too hot if you've got really fragile fabric. Then we're gonna tuck the raw edge so that it meets that stitch line and then back over. And we're gonna pop a pin close to this folded edge. And it's a really good tip to put them close to that folded edge because that's the bit that we're gonna be stitching. There's absolutely no point in stitching here because this hem will just unravel and fall over. Johnny boy, down you go. Johnny, down you go, good boy. Sorry, the cat's uh, here to say hi. <laughs> Tell you, every video he has to say hi. So we're going to tuck the raw edge under, fold it back and pop a pin close to the folded edge that's up this side. And then we're gently going to press as soon as you've pressed you'll see you've got a lovely flat piece of fabric to stitch some people avoid pressing but imagine trying to stitch something that's all uh, lumpy and bumpy it's not a good plan i'm going to leave you to go around and do all this pinning it may take you some time but it's really worth putting the effort in and then i'll see you back at the sewing machine remember you need the uh, correct color thread back in your machine all right guys see you in a minute wow that was a trial, wasn't it, guys? I promise you it will be 100% worth it. So we're all nicely pressed and everything's looking great. I want your machine stitch to be at least one whole stitch bigger than your ordinary stitch. So my machine defaults to two and a half. So I'm going to stitch this at three and a half. That's because it's seen when the garment's worn. So it always looks nicer when it's a longer stitch. If you ordinarily use a three uh, for a stitch length, then pop it up to a four and um, you get the picture. So all we're going to do is stitch close to this edge because we don't want it to unravel. So nice and steady, we're going to do our back stitch and we're just going to gently stitch all the way around, taking the pins out as we go. When we've done this, we can actually remove that guide stitch that we did and give the hem a press and you'll be well hopefully you'll be really impressed with the work that you've done i'm going to leave you to go all the way around take out this stitch it should just pull you can it's quite a long one so you may have to snip each stitch at a different point but it should just pull through quite easily if you get rid of all of that give it a good press and then i'll meet you I want you to have your top skirt and your bottom skirt and lots of pins and we're going to tackle the gather. All right, enjoy hemming. So the first thing I'm going to try and show is how we start off this gather because there's lots of gather. So let's see if we can figure this out. In here, this is the skirt top and it's the right way round. OK, and what I'm hold of is the bottom of it. So it's not the waist, it's the bit with the lovely curves. This is the big skirt that we're going to gather. So the gather stitches are here at the top and it's inside out. So I've placed inside the skirt the right way around. So the good side of the fabric showing, but it's upside down. So this is the bottom of it and the top is down here. And I've slid it inside our big circle of fabric. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to match the side seams of the skirt to the side seams of our circle that we're going to gather. And we've put a pin. Now I just want to show you, when we match the side seams, sorry there's lots lots in the way when we match the side seams i really want you to match the side seams so it's the actual seam itself that you need to make sure goes together once you've done that you're going to go to the other side seam 
and do exactly the same. So you've got two points marked. Then, if you've got just two sections to your uh, circle, you will have a notch at the halfway point that should match the notch at the halfway point on the skirt. So you can simply pin them together. If like me, you've got eight sections to your bottom, you're gonna take the middle seam and match it to that centre notch. Okay, so I have two panels here, one and two, and we're connected here at the side seam, and now we're connected in the centre. So all of this two panels needs to be gathered to the same size as that piece there. Now what you might find uh, helpful if you do in the two panels is that you put a pin at the quarter point, but that's completely up to you if you find it difficult. So we're gonna start, I'm just gonna show you how to gather this section first. So we're gonna take a hold of two, two of the strings. Notice if I pull them gently, it gathers the fabric. Hi, Johnny. I knew we couldn't get by without it. So first things first is we're gonna gently pull and gather the fabric down. Now there's lots of gather in this skirt. Don't be tempted to try and do it all at once because you'll, you'll end up with a, like a block of gathered uh, fabric that you can't get past. So just gently take it all the way to the other side. And the aim of this is to make those two panels or the half of one panel, depending on how many you did, match that quarter of the skirt. So that's from the side seam to the centre point. Now, it doesn't matter whether you do the front or back first, in all honesty, um, so long as you do both. But I would work in quarters because you can pull from either end. So we're not pushing this gather all the way to the other side seam. We're just pushing it all towards the centre. Now I'm going to focus on pulling this gather and then when I'm ready to pin I'll come back to you and I'll show you that in detail. Okay so I have pulled this gather until it's approximately the length of this and that's the curve on the skirt. So it's around about the correct length. So there's no ripples on that skirt at the back. That's nice and flat. All of the gathering ripples is on the circular skirt section. Now, some areas have a little bit too much gather. So we need to just gently ease it so that all of that gather is nice and even. When you're happy, you're gonna start pinning. I'm going to put one pin in and then I can show you in a bit more detail. So first of all, I put my pins in that direction because they're easier to pull out when I'm stitching. The other thing to consider is that you don't have any of these ripples tucked under. So all of that gather, pull it up and match the draw edges and pop a pin. Now you're going to put lots of pins in this because they're the only things keeping the gather nice and even as you go. So keep popping your pins, making sure your gather is all beautiful. So I'm matching the top edges, so matching all of those raw edges and I'm putting my pins through. My gather is as even as I can get it. Now you are Attaching this gather to a curve, but it shouldn't much matter too much for the pinning. But there are some things to watch out for when we're actually stitching. I'm just going to pin this section so you can see how many pins I actually use. Because you may be surprised. You may not use as many. Now the trick with the two rows of gather stitches is so that you get a really even gather but it also means that you will be stitching between those two lines so you don't get your gathers caught like at an angle so it's just to help with that so if you thought oh gosh I could have just done it in one 
because lots of uh, instructions do say to do it in one. I just think you get a much better end result if you do it with two. Now this is just the first quarter that I'm pinning. So that's how regular I would put my pins. So that's the front with the gather and that's the back where you're attaching it to the bottom edge of the skirt. So as you can see, there are no ripples in the skirt, the upper skirt. All of the gather is in the lower skirt. Now I'll let you continue because there is lots to do. And then I'll meet you back at the sewing machine when you're all pinned and ready. And I'll just show you a couple of techniques that will help keep this gather even whilst you're stitching. Um, and then we're good to go. The other thing that's worth noticing, sorry, I should have said, once you've done the first section, you have more of an idea as to how much you need to gather the fabric in order for it to work on all the other sections. So it is this first bit that's normally the most time consuming because you don't really know how much gather to put in, but you should find it gets quicker as you move uh, through those skirt sections. So we're all gathered and all pinned. I'm starting at a seam. Uh, just just because I can. I always start at a seam. I just think it's a neater detail. There are a few things that as you're stitching, I want you to check up on. So first of all, you've still got to consider your seam allowance on this side, which is one and a half centimetres. It should coincide with the centre of these two lines, um, but still keep an eye on it. The other thing I want you to think about is where this gather is. Now, as you stitch, there's a tendency that the foot can push it like this. And if we stitch that pleat in, imagine we stitched it, this is never gonna hang nicely. So as you're stitching, you're also just gonna be smooth in this and it needs to be just straight down from the seam. But remember you're stitching a curve. So I also want you to consider that. So if you pull everything straight, that looks really easy to stitch, but you're probably gonna come into difficulties underneath and you're gonna get little pleats in. So you do need to keep a check on that. I've probably made that sound really complicated because ultimately you're just stitching in a straight line, but there are a few things just, just to consider. So I'll start off with you and then I'll leave you to it. So we're gonna ordinarily start with our back stitch. Our stitch length, sorry, I should have mentioned, our stitch length is back at our regular one. So it's 2.5 on my machine. And we're gonna go for it. So I've created the curve up here and I'm gonna take my pins out at the last minute. Just keep smoothing my material down. And I've got lots of pins, so I do have to stop quite regularly. And I'm just checking that underneath is still all nice and flat, so I'm not catching any bits of fabric. Now, some people may be tempted to stitch over their pins at this point. I know lots of people who will do that. Um, Health and safety wise, it's not a great idea. If your needle hits a pin and shatters it, which does happen, it could end up in your eye. Um, and I quite like my eyes, so I, I take them out. Uh, if that doesn't scare you enough, um, it can actually very easily knock the timing out on your machine if you hit a pin. Um, and that's at least a £40 bill from the repairman. So, um, yeah. I would take your pins out as you go. I'm just checking underneath again. I'm not catching anything and I'm pulling all of my pleats at that 90 degrees. For those beady eyed watchers, you'll have seen Johnny pass through at the back. <laughs> this might be a good time for me to leave you and get rid of him. And I will meet you actually before i do that once you've stitched this you want to finish this edge of the seam i'm going to overlock mine but whatever your choice of seam finish is if you finish this seam and then i'll meet you at the ironing board all right then see you in a bit so we've done all the gathering this is the top of the skirt and this is 
the bottom of the skirt that you've just attached it's all gathered beautifully i've taken all of my gathering stitches out you'll notice so you need to do that and then we're going to press and this is quite an important part of this project because it's what makes it look beautiful so i've pushed underneath all of the seams upwards so they're all in this direction and then i'm simply i'm going to pull these uh, gathers down and press that seam so hopefully you'll notice as i go around what a difference that makes to the gather so if i pull this round you'll see how they're kind of just all over and they don't sit very nicely so the seam goes upwards and then i just tug on those gathers and press them all in you're going to work your way around that and then we're going to tackle buttonholes guys so if you haven't done them before i will first of all go through buttonholes on a uh, automatic buttonhole machine because that's the one that i just happen to have but i will add into the video doing it on a four-step machine so at least you uh, can see uh, both ways of doing it so happy pressing and i'll see you at the sewing machine with your waistband okay so let's do buttonholes now this first step um is mainly because it's lightweight fabric uh, some people will put little bits of interfacing behind the buttonholes um so that it's got some structure because the buttonhole operation can kind of screw up all of the lightweight fabric um what we're going to do because it's going to be gathered in elastic and we don't want that uh, stiffness of the interfacing is we're just going to cut ourselves a scrap of fabric that's about four centimeters by seven centimeters bigger is better than smaller because if it's smaller you might catch the edge and it will uh, create problems when you're stitching so it'll kind of go into the machine so you're just simply going to pin it on the wrong side of the fabric now i can just see my buttonhole mark there so i'm going to cover that up and there's another one over here and then I can pin it in place. So it's just to reinforce the back of the buttonhole really, whilst we're stitching it. I'm just gonna flip it over to make sure that it has covered where the buttonhole marks are. One of mine is really light. Let me get a pen to draw that, she says. I will draw that in later, but you can see this one very clear, clearly on the camera. So that pin tells me that that bit of, bit of fabric that we pinned on the back is in the right location. So that's our first operation. We're just going to pin them. We're not going to do anything else. We're just going to leave those there. We're making sure the pins are away from the buttonhole, though. Otherwise, again, they'll cause us some problems. So I'm going to set up the machine. And first of all, we're going to do an automatic buttonhole. So I'll join you at the machine. So I have an automatic um, machine here, an automatic buttonhole machine. You'll know that you have one of those because your foot will look like this. So the important bits are these two uh, bits of plastic here. And you should have a little bit of a compartment here that comes open. Now, if you were doing it for a button, you would pop the button in there and slide it shut. And that would make sure that the gap between these two is the right size for your buttonhole. And it would automatically do that. Now, obviously, we don't have um, a button that we're putting onto the skirt. We're just basically creating a hole that the drawstring can go through. It is worth saying at this point that this is optional. You don't have to do the buttonholes, you can just do an elasticated waist and if so, you can fast forward all this rambling. Uh, but if you are doing um, a tie string, we need to do this step. So, because we don't have a button, I'm just going to measure the line that we have on our uh, waistband so that it equals between those two. So just bear with me whilst I do that. Okay, as luck would have it, that works very well. Then we're going to pop it on just like we would an ordinary foot. And you have, can you see this here? And it says pushing down. 
you're going to push it all the way down but you need to make sure it goes behind that first bit of plastic so don't force it it's just a gentle one and that's like a sensor that tells the machine when it needs to turn around so that's our first thing that we're going to do i'll turn my machine on and i will press the button which let me show you so on my machine, I do have some different options. I'm just going to go for plain old number eight. And what happens is it sets everything up for me. So that's all sorted and we are good to go. Most automatic buttonholes start at the front of the buttonhole and work backwards. OK, so it does it in this direction. So just be aware of that. Most automatic uh, machines also, you if you keep your foot down, it will continue to go until it stops and it will stop of its own accord even if you have your foot down. So just um, wait for the machine to stop on its own and then you know it's completed. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the speed right down on my machine. If you can't turn your speed down, you just want to do it at a nice, gentle pace. If you go too fast, it can cause uh, problems. So um, we're all set up to go. Give me a moment and I will put my uh, fabric in ready to do our first buttonhole. So I have my fabric here and my line for my buttonhole is under there. What I'm looking for is to put my needle down and it's going to be precisely at the start of our line. Now it's difficult for me to show that on camera so you will just have to trust me but I'm looking underneath the foot at where the needle is actually going down. And when I'm happy that the needle's gone down in the right location, I'm gonna put the foot down completely. And then I'm gonna let it do its thing. I'm just gonna press down on the foot and you'll notice it will go from side to side first, does the bottom, and then it starts making its journey upwards. And it will keep going upwards until this lever hits the one at the back and then it will change direction. So it's coming back down the other side now. And then it will go going up on this side now. My foot is still firmly down on the presser foot and notice the machine has stopped so my foot is still all the way down but it's stopped so that's when I know it's finished completely so I can lift my foot off lift the foot up and let me show you what it looks like okay so that's my little hole I'll do the other one and then I'll show you how we cut that in order to let the ribbon or the tie through an automatic buttonhole really is a little helpful project uh, tool but it isn't the only way that you can do it so i will uh, bring a machine home and film one of these with uh, a four-step buttonhole basically with a four-step you end up stitching a box 
and there's different settings on your machine. So it's not as simple, but then again, it isn't incredibly difficult either, but it can just be a little bit trickier, that's all. I'll let this one finish, let you see the whole process again. My foot is still firmly down. And then it's gonna go back up that side. And then it stops. It is worth saying, whilst uh, I have your attention on buttonholes, that this is great because it's like kind of senses. But if you are doing like a thick coat and it and the machine detects some kind of resistance, then sometimes it will start to return the buttonhole far too soon. So what you really want to do if you've got really thick fabric, in my opinion, is to use a four-step buttonhole. Okay, but just so that you know what, what pitfalls you can have with this one. Right, I'm gonna take it off and then I'm gonna show you how to cut them. So the most important thing to do when you're cutting a buttonhole is to put this pin in. So what that pin's doing, so I'm gonna cut here, it stops me continuing and going beyond that buttonhole. Okay, so it is important that you put that pin there. And then it's important to remember which part of the unpicker, I'll keep that there, it's easier to see which part of the unpicker is the blade so it's not the tip it's the u shape here that's where the blade is and that's what you're going to use to cut open your buttonhole so here goes nothing we're going to go all the way in and then we're gently going to push and cut that fabric until we hit the needle it's so easy to slip so you definitely do need the needle i took the needle out and you'll see there is now an opening there for everything to go through. Now, some people put fray check on this bit. Um, you can do. Some people use what they call um, buttonhole chisels. So they're different sizes. And it's a chisel that's like as wide as that. And you hit it with a hammer. Well, a mallet, not a hammer. Um, and it, and it um, creates a neat edge. I haven't put fray check on, um, two reasons, one I can't find mine, but also you will find that it will naturally just fray over time, but it will disappear, so these bits will disappear and it will start to look much better. So there are two buttonholes, again they are optional, the last thing that we need to do is to trim the excess off the back, okay, so this is the fabric that we put on to start with. I'm just going to find my scissors. And we're going to trim it quite close. Be very careful that you don't get your waistband caught in this. It's really awkward to do when you're showing it to the camera, you know. And the reason we're trimming this is because it's going to be elasticated. If we don't trim it, it will become like a... Um, a thick point in the elastic and it won't actually gather the same as the elastic at either side of it that's that's the only reason we're doing this for i'm just going to show you on one and then you can have a look yourself doing the other one so you're just going to cut it like that so you've only got a little bit around each buttonhole i'm going to do the other one and then you need your skirt that you've been working on along with your waistband and we're going to attach the two So this is a completely different machine now. This is quite a basic machine and I'm just gonna show you how to do a buttonhole on this one. Uh, so then you've got two options. I am aware that different machines have different ways of doing buttonholes, but these are the two most common. If you take a look in your instruction manual, you should have a real great way uh, of explaining it in there for your particular machine. But it's either gonna be one of the two that I show you today, or it's gonna be a hybrid somewhere in the middle. So this is a basic machine, this is a four step buttonhole and what I've got this view on for is because I want you to take notice of this bit. So this is the stitch width. 
So it's something that you normally change when you have uh, are doing zigzag. So it changes the width of the stitch in this direction rather than the length, which is in this direction. You want to pop that onto five. You can do it less, but if you're a beginner, I would pop it onto five because it's kind of um, a bit more foolproof uh, than playing with it. So this goes onto five. This on my machine, as it kind of shows you here, is the stitch length. So that's in this direction. So that dictates how wide um, the stitch is. So how close the zigzags are together, if that makes sense. And what you'll see is I can move it here and it's just numbers. But as I get close to the zero, there's this little strange symbol, which I think looks like a buttonhole. If you put it in the middle as a starting point, you should be fine. Now these, hi Johnny, these bits might be in different locations on your machine, but they're the symbols that you're looking for, okay? I'm gonna move the camera around and get rid of Johnny and we'll have a look at the next part. So this is the part of my machine that has all the different uh, stitches that I can do. You're actually looking on your machine for these three symbols here. Because uh, what we're going to do is stitch a box. So number one takes us down, two goes across, three goes back up and four goes across the top. So you will find on my dial, now I'm on number one, I'll do that stitch, then two, then three and then back to four. So they're the operations that I'm going to be talking about when I tell you to go from one and flip it to two, three and then four. So you should find those symbols on your machine. It could possibly be on a dial that you move. It just so happens that mine are in that little window. Okay, I'm going to move you again to look at the next bit. So we're going to take a look at the foot now. So it's different to the other one. So it doesn't have any of those plastic nodules or a lever, lever sorry, that you pull down. This is the self-threader. Don't get that confused. Um, so it's not automatic, it doesn't sense when it has to change direction and you are in charge of doing that. It also doesn't have anywhere to put your button so that you can check. So the first thing that you want to do is to pop your button just for measure, just for size, between these notches. I think my other button yeah, is still in here, so let, let me show you with this button. So you would hold your button up and see where it takes you. Now I, I can see that bottom red notch, which is where I'm going to line it up with. And I've gone up one, two, three. So it's the fourth red notch up. And I'm going to test that and see if the button can go through it. So that's how we're going to start. So I'm going to pop the foot on. So it moves up and down. I'm hoping that you notice there's a set of red lines there that don't move. And that's what we're going to use as the guide. So we're going to, when we start, we're going to pop them level with the fourth notch over here. And as we stitch, we're going to go down until they're level with the last notch. And then we're going to go back up until it's level again with that number four notch. What that means is that you finish and start in the same place which is very important if you want your buttonhole to close when you do step four, which is the uh, zigzags across the top. So let's get some fabric. You will have marked your buttonhole like you did on the previous um, explanation. But what I like to do when I'm using this type of buttonhole is to put some pins across the top and bottom like that. So we're just imagining that that's the size of our buttonhole. What it means when we pop it down here, we have something that we can line up at the side with those, those lines. So before I put my foot down, I've lined the pin with the, not, with the red marks and I've then matched the red marks with the fourth one up. I'm hoping that's clear so far. So finally, we're actually going to stitch. So I'm going to get rid of the pins for the moment. So we're going to be on number one. And number one goes down this right hand side. 
you're going to stitch very nice and steady you're not going to go fast because then it has a tendency to get knotted so you're just going to go nice and steady down that left hand side and right hand side sorry until the inside notch it red marks match the red marks here so fingers crossed does help if you set to the right sorry we are now set on number one okay so we're going down and watching those red marks so, until they line up okay they're lined up i'm going to make sure my needle is up and outside out of the way before i turn my dial so that it's on number two and then we're going to go a wider zigzag across the bottom now i'm not going to do too many of those because it can create like a bump that the foot can't get over so we're just going to do i don't know let's say eight of those and then we're going to make sure that our needle is out again before we change our stitch dial and then we're going to change it to number three Number three is going to go back up this left hand side. So we're now watching these red notches again and we're going to keep going until we're at the fourth one. Now, one thing to note with some, some of these machines is sometimes it needs a gentle help. It, sometimes it just needs you to just help the fabric through. So let's just see. So I've just put some pressure in front. I'm not pulling, it's just a nice steady tension that I'm putting in the fabric to help it get through the feed dogs. So I'm lined up, I'm going to take the needle out, I'm going to go back to the dial that says four and two, and I'm going to do those across the top. Again, not too many because I want it to match the ones at the bottom. So let's have a look at what this looks like. So there you go. You will again pop your pin across the top so that you can cut it with your... Um, unpicker which is here and I will repeat myself but we're going to go in and we're just going to gently let that unpicker do the work and it will cut right up to the top and there you have your buttonhole now buttonholes are nothing to be scared of but it's well worth practicing first on some fabric always use the fabric that you're going to be stitching on as well as Things to note is that you don't want to do it on a single layer. You need either interfacing behind or another piece of the fabric behind it so that it has something to um, actually go through. And if you are doing it for a button, you're just going to then check that your button actually goes through. Now, I think it just about goes through. We maybe should have done another notch on that one, but it does just about go through. So hopefully... That's going to make you a little bit more happier doing your buttonholes and we can get back on with the next step. Just before we attach anything, we're just going to do step 10 in your instructions, which is stitching the short edge of your waistband together. So we've got the right sides of the fabric facing each other and this is the short edge. What I want you to take notice of is there are two notches one here and one here where the pins are and we're not stitching we're leaving a gap so we're going to go from the top to the first pin and then do another row from the pin down to the bottom we're going to use our good old one and a half centimeter seam allowance and create the loop for the waistband it's the first bit now, don't do this too small, this hole, uh, because you have to thread the elastic through it. But also, if you make it too big, what you will find is that it kind of creeps over to the front of the waistband. So when you close this gap, you will see it on your actual finished garment. So try to be accurate with where those notches were. Then we're just going to nip to the ironing board for the next step and then i promise we are going to attach it first thing we're going to do is to press open the seam so we're going to go in one direction then the other direction and then we're going to open them up she says <laughs> there we go
And then we're going to fold this waistband in half along its length, like so. So we're making sure that these raw edges along here match and we're just going to press down with the iron. We're going to do that all the way around and then it's back to the sewing machine. We need all of our pins and we need our skirt. And I promise this is when we will attach the waistband. Okay, so let me explain what we have here. So this is your skirt and this is the waistband. And the front, so the bit with the pockets, is facing me. It's the right way around. And then we're going to take the waistband that we've just pressed. And what I have here are the two buttonholes. And then I have my centre notch that we marked. I'm going to take those buttonholes and I'm going to make them face the skirt. And I'm going to match the centre notch at the front there. So I'll just pop a pin and then I'll show you close up. So I have the buttonholes are here. You may not be able to see this. So they're the buttonholes. They're going face down onto the right side of the skirt. And then I'm matching the raw edges here. And I have a notch that I can match. So that's the centre of the waistband and the centre of the front. So that's matched. I'm then going to go to the back edge. And the seam that I left, the seam that I uh, stitched the uh, waistband together I am going to match that seam with the centre back notch if I can find it there we go again just bear with me and I will hold it up so that you can see what I'm doing I've made sure there's no twist in that waistband as well that's important so there's no twist in the waistband I've brought it all the way to the back so this is the seam that we left the hole in. So the right side is facing the skirt and then all of the raw edges are matching. And also that seam is matching with the notch at the back of the waistband. And then you're simply gonna pin everything in place in between. Once you've done that, we will be stitching it on the machine. So I'll join you back at the machine once we're all stitched in, sorry, once we're all pinned in place. Okay, so we're back to our one and a half centimetre seam allowance and we're back to our two and a half or our regular stitch length that, that we would use and we're simply going to stitch all the way around so we're not leaving any gaps we're stitching all the way around the waistband it's worth noting that you will ultimately be threading elastic through this channel so what you don't want to do is to be inaccurate because your elastic won't fit in the gap that you're leaving so really pay attention to the seam allowance that you're using and uh, you won't have any problems so we're back stitch as normal and we're just going to gently go all the way around until we get back to where we started you'll finish this seam then and then you will be pressing it um let me check towards the skirt when you've finished i'll see you when you've done that with your elastic and we'll get on with threading so we have the last few steps to go now um, and this is we're going to put the elastic into the waistband now the hardest part is to figure out how much elastic you need um i suggest you measure your waist and minus three um centimeters but it all depends on your elastic. So some elastic is super stretchy, some is, is not super stretchy. So if I were you, I would cut around about 20 centimetres more than your waist measurement. And I would thread your elastic and then try it on. Because some people like things tighter. Some people like it to sit at a different location. So that would change the, um, the dimension of the elastic uh, that you need. So my suggestion is to try it on. So do more elastic than that you need and then try it on. So do you remember this handy gap that we left in our waistband on the inside? That's what we're going to use to thread our elastic through. Now this is quite thick elastic, so it does take a moment to get it through. But once you've popped it through, I may be teaching lots of you to do things that you already know how to do. 
uh, feel free to fast forward. But I like to do these tutorials um, with a complete beginner in mind, so I don't want to assume anything. So I'm going to show you how to thread elastic. Now, if you're left-handed, you would go in the opposite direction, but the process is very similar. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to take a hold of the safety pin at the bottom, and then I'm going to push the fabric over the top of the elastic and the safety pin. I don't have to push loads and once you've got some over you're going to grip the top of the safety pin here you're going to let go of the bottom and then you're going to pull and you can feed this elastic through as you do that okay so it's gone up a little bit so repeat I'm going to hold the bottom of the pin I'm going to push the fabric over the top of the pin and the elastic and then I'm going to grip the top let go of the bottom and pull it through and slowly but surely, you will start to fill your elastic. So I'm going to show you one more time. Gripping the bottom, pushing over the top of the safety pin, gripping the top of the safety pin, letting go of the bottom, and then pulling so that the elastic comes through. You are going to have to help it because of the um, gap. There we go. You're going to work your way all the way to the other side and I'll meet you when you get to that point. So when you have come out of the other side, so we've gone all the way around, I want you to check a couple of things first. I want you to make sure that the elastic isn't twisted at any point. And then if you take the safety pin and put it through both layers of elastic. So I'll show you what I mean. So the two elastic pieces are joined together. If I grip this and then pull the waistband, it should even all of the gather out. Okay. And then we just try it on. Try it on inside out and you will be able to adjust as necessary at this point so that it fits you properly. And when you've done that, I'll join you back at the machine. I've tried the skirt on, which is the recommended way of doing it. If you guess the elastic, it might work, but they've all got different stretches. So I would really recommend trying it on, pulling the elastic tight till it's at the place where you know it's going to fit properly. So this is the waistband that you can see, and the skirt is all the way uh, back here and this is where I need to stitch so I'm just going to use a regular stitch I'm going to do backwards and forwards I've pulled it out of the waistband enough and then we'll go back stitch again we're going to trim this to approximately one centimetre And then we're going to fold those elastic bits back. Now you do have to pull more from the skirt, which is tricky because we've only got a small uh, gap. But you're going to open those out like so. And we're going to zigzag down each side. I'm going to spend some time just pulling uh, the elastic out of my waistband. But I'll join you back and we'll do that zigzagging. Okay, so I've pulled that waistband out and we're going to zigzag down each side. So my machine's set at zigzag with a stitch length of two and a width of five. And we're just simply going to stitch with a back stitch down each side. This is just so that it lies flat when it's in the waistband. Sorry, that doesn't, that's the skirt that's getting in the way. There we go. And a back stitch at the end. 
I'm hoping before this step, you have ensured that your elastic isn't twisted and you are good to sew, as we say. Let's go down this side. We're then going to let the elastic back into the waistband and we can hand stitch the gap. So once you've done that, you're going to let your elastic back into your waistband and join me back here and we'll just do that last bit of hand stitching. Okay, so here is the gap that we left. I'm going to start up at the top. Now I'm not going through the elastic at this point, I'm just going through the waistband itself. I'm going to do two or three small stitches in exactly the same spot because what that will do is anchor the thread and once we've done that we're just going to move down a section and through this doesn't have to be the neatest if you're not a hand sewer don't worry about too much what it looks like it just needs to be secure we're going to be stitching over this in a second anyway uh, so it's not something to panic about it's just giving it a really lovely detail we're going to do this until we get to the bottom and then we're going to do three stitches in the same place again and then we've finished and then our next job is to make this elastic all the gather in the waistband even all the way around the waistband before we stitch it because once we stitch across this waistband through the elastic the elastic is trapped uh, so one great thing is it will stop the elastic twisting but if you have all the gather at the front, for example, it will stay at the front. It won't be able to redistribute when you're wearing it. So I want you to spend some time getting the elastic to be nice and even. What I would suggest, if you take a hold of the side seams and pull the elastic waistband to its extreme and then let go, it usually finds itself gathered nice and even. You might have to do it a few times and you may have to help sort of ruffle some of this gather. But I will join you back here at the machine when you've got that nice and even. Okay, see you in a sec. Okay, so I've spent some time getting my gather nice and even. And what I've then done once I'm happy is I've put a pin through all of the layers right through to the back there so through the elastic i've put it at the center so that's between the buttonholes if you did the buttonholes i've put another one at the center seam hopefully you can see the seam there i've done the same at the back and i've also done the same at the other end of the side seam so you've got four pins that are marking the location uh, where everything will be nice and even between the two because when we stitch we're going to stretch okay and we don't want to lose this even gather that we've created we're going to stitch two rows of stitching along here and that's just going to give you a really lovely detail as i said stopping your elastic twisting and moving around but it also tightens everything up so you need your machine set to a zigzag stitch uh, stitch length around between two and three and a stitch width of five and we're going to be stretching so it's quite a technique so make sure you're ready for this i'm going to fill my bobbin and once i've done that i'll meet you at the machine okay i think this is the best angle to show you how i do this so my machine set the zigzag as we said this is the center back seam where you see the the white pin i've got the top of the waistband lined up with a one and a half centimeter seam allowance and I've put my needle into my fabric so it's held at the moment. I'm just going to do a small back stitch so I know everything's anchored. I'm going to make sure my needle is in the waistband and this is where the fun happens. So I'm finding the next pin which is at the side seam. I'm going to take a hold of that pin and I'm going to take a hold of the back and I'm going to pull until the fabric at the waistband is nice and smooth so there's no gather and then I'm going to start to stitch and whilst I stitch my arms are going to travel through the machine so hopefully you can see this and I'll, I'll start now and we'll see how we go 
So I'm just going to simply do my zigzag. And as I'm going, hopefully you can see the waistband stays smooth and my arm is traveling through. Now eventually I won't be able to reach. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to put my needle in and then I can readjust everything and start again. So I'm going to take a hold of the pin, which is here. And I'm going to take a hold at the back and pull so that the waistband is nice and smooth and I'm off. I'm making sure that I'm sticking to that one and a half centimetre seam allowance and I'm going to stop when I get to the pin. Ooh. Or you let go of elastic like I did. <laughs> I think we're okay, I don't think it's been a disaster. So I've stopped, my needle is in, I'm going to rearrange all of the fabric and I'm going to do exactly the same thing until I get to the next pin. Just checking that my bobbin is happy. So I'm going to take a hold of the next pin which might be out of camera, it's over here. I'm going to take a hold of the back. I'm going to pull everything so that the waistband is nice and flat and we're going to keep going we've got that one and a half centimeter seam allowance that we're looking at now i'm going to pause there it's quite difficult for me to put my arms in the right location for you when you've done the first one all the way around, meet me back here and we'll line up the second row of stitching. Okay, so when you've finished your first row, you should have a lovely effect there at the top. Now we're going to do the row below. We're going to start in the same location and this is at the back. I can take my pin out this time as I go. And what we're going to do this time is we're going to line up the edge of the foot here is lined up with the seam that's between the skirt and the waistband. We're going to do a couple of back stitches as we did before and then once we're anchored we're going to take a hold, I'm going to set this up for you, we're going to take a hold of the fabric behind the machine here and I'm going to take a hold of the next pin and I'm going to stretch until that waistband is nice and flat and then we're going to stitch. So I'm making sure that the edge of the foot stays along that seam and that everything's nice and flat and we're stitching. When it gets too far I'm stopping, my needle is in the fabric, then I can let go and I can readjust where my arms are. We take our hold again and pull and we can finish off that one. I'll let you go all the way around. Hopefully you're really pleased with the effect that it gives you. When you've um, been all the way around, just get some steam on the elastic. It will just help it to contract and it will even everything out. And then I'll meet you back here for the last step. Okay, so this is my waistband, all pressed with some steam, looking beautiful, if I do say so myself. Now, for those of you who didn't do the optional waist tie, you can go get ready for your ta-da moment. So you can go get your makeup on, get yourself feeling all beautiful. Uh, for the others, we're just going to thread our tie through. Now, I'm using ribbon. You can buy waist ties. You can buy hoodie ties and things. This is just ribbon because I think it goes really well. It's actually the same ribbon that I used to trim the pockets here. So hopefully it ties in. And we're just simply going to thread it through, she says, simply, just like we did the elastic. So it's a little bit tougher because the elastic is in there. But you're just going to pull... So hold the bottom, push over the top, hold the top and pull. And you're going to keep going until it comes out of the other side. When you've got it to the other side, you can cut it at whatever length you want. And then you can go get ready for your ta-da moment. Okay, I'll see you soon when you're all sorted. 
So how did you find it guys? Hopefully you're as happy with your skirt as I am the beautiful one that I've made here. Um, if you've got any feedback, uh, good or bad, just love to hear it. If you comment below or send me a private message, that's absolutely fine. But most importantly, I would love, love, love to see your makes in action. If you could uh, take some pictures, share them on social media, that would be fantastic. Um, because I just love seeing them because you all do such a great job. I love seeing all the different fabrics. Uh, you all do something that I would have never thought of and I love that. Um, but for now, go fly with your new skirt, guys. See you soon. Bye.